In this video, we'll create a vector rocket illustration using Adobe Illustrator. We'll go over setting up our document using basic shapes, the pen tool, and also work with the color tools and the shape builder tool. You can download the demo files provided in our course folder and follow along in this video tutorial. After the tutorial, try to create your own illustration from scratch. Create a sketch and make it into a vector graphic. The first thing we'll do is look at the illustration and what we're about to recreate. Take a look at the image and see if you can find any parts of the image that you can recreate with basic shapes. Then look for any parts of the graphic that you can edit using the pen tool or combine multiple shapes to create more complex ones. If I look at this illustration, I could use the ellipse tool for the circles, the rectangle tool for the exhaust, the star tool, and maybe even the rounded rectangle tool. The other shapes I can create with the pen tool and since the graphic is symmetrical, I can create one side and then use my transform tool to reflect and mirror a copy over to the other side. So to begin, let's open up Illustrator and create a new document. So I'll go up to the file menu and select new. And we're going to name this file vector rocket. I'm going to make it a thousand pixels by a thousand pixels. I'm just going to keep it at one artboard. I'm going to remove the bleed and I'm going to make this be in RGB and I'll keep my raster effects to 300 pixels per inch. Next thing I'll do is just hit create and I'll get my artboard up and now I'll start to set up my document file. So some things that I'm going to need here are my pen tool. So I'm going to hold down, tear this off. I'm going to need my basic shapes. So I'm going to hold that tool down and tear that off. I'm also going to need some panels. So of course I'm going to need my layer panel. And if you don't see your panels or your layer panels over on the right hand side, we can go to the window menu and select layers. We can also open up our swatches and we can open up our properties. So the next thing I'll do is actually place my sketch. So in the files that you download, you will see a folder called rocket scan. And if you go into that folder, we have a JPEG there called scan. So I'm going to place this file into Illustrator and then lock it on its layer, create a new layer and start drawing my vector graphic over top of it. So to place your image, we're going to go up to the file menu. We're going to select place. And then I'm going to go through my files and just locate where that scanned image is. So you could just go to where you have downloaded your files. So I'll select scan. And remember when you are placing a file inside of Illustrator, make sure that you see the link button here. Check that on so that it links the file according to the file path. So I'll press place. And then I'm just going to click and drag so I get the full width here. And again, don't worry about the resolution here because we're going to make a vector graphic. It really doesn't depend on the resolution. We're just using this to trace out over top of it. So what I'm going to do is in my layer panel, I'm going to click on the edit or lock button. Then I'm going to rename this layer by double clicking on the layer. I'm going to rename it raster and then I will create a new layer and call that vector rocket. So now as we go through our illustration, what I'm going to do is label all of my layers and label the paths that I create. Okay. So this will actually get us to keep our file organized. And also if we ever come back to it, if we need to edit it later on, we know exactly what paths 
belong to which portion of the illustration. So like I said, first thing that we're going to do is look at this illustration and see which shapes that we can use to create just the basic outlines, right? So of course, for the exhaust back here, we can just use the rectangle tool. We can use the ellipse tool for the circles for the window. Okay? But I can also use my pen tool to create some basic shapes. So what I'm going to do is just zoom in here, command plus. Okay? And the first thing I'm going to do is take my pen tool and I'm just going to draw half of the body of the rocket. And then later on, I could just select it. And then we're going to use our transform tool to reflect it and rotate it so that we get an even um, side on the other side of the rocket. I'll probably do the same thing with the wings. So I'll draw everything that belongs to the right hand side here and then reflect it and make a copy of the left hand side. So first thing I'm going to do is make sure that my pen tool is in the correct drawing mode. So you want to make sure that you have a fill of none. So I'll remove the fill. My stroke is at the smallest stroke level here. I'm also going to change this to magenta just so you can see what I'm drawing. And now when I trace over this, um, the color won't cover over top of my illustration. Okay, so just make sure that your raster layer is locked. You've selected your vector rocket layer, which you can draw on. And now you're just going to start from the top here. I'm just going to click once. And again, you don't want to click sequentially all the way across like this, or else you're going to get a jagged edge. What you want to do is see how far you can get away with drawing a clean Bezier curve. Once you start practicing more with the pen tool, you can see how, um, how far you can get with placing anchor points to get that smooth Bezier curve. Okay, so I'm just going to place my anchor point down here at the bottom and then I'm going to click and drag downwards to the right. And it doesn't matter if you're just a little bit inside of or a little bit outside of the original drawing. That's what, you know, creating this into a vector graphic is all about. Making it be more um, precise than your drawing, right? So again, I want to change directions and go upwards here. So I want to get rid of this control handle. So I'm going to click back. Make sure you see that inverted V. That's right there. I'm going to click so that I delete that one control handle. And then I'm going to place my anchor point right here towards the middle. And of course, you're going to do a little bit of guesswork where you're placing this. right? But then I'm going to click and drag just to make a subtle curve there. Click back on this anchor point to delete this control handle. And then I'm going to go straight up. So I'm going to look for that close icon to make sure that I'm closing my path. I'm going to hold shift just to make sure that my line segment is straight and then click. Okay, so now I have a closed path here. So now my layer panel, right, your layers again are used to organize your illustration. Right, I'm going to click on the expand arrow just to see all the paths that I've drawn inside this layer. So here is the right hand side of the body of the rocket. So I'm going to type in right body. I'll just open this up. And now I'll continue to draw the other shapes. So now I'm going to maybe draw the wing. So again, I'll zoom in a little bit. And again, I'm just going to start from the inside, right? You don't want to start right along the path here or else you'll get these white gaps. So again, remember that your, your um, vector graphics are built on a layer structure. So I will eventually, when I start coloring this in, I'll put the body of the rocket on top of the wings. The wings will be at the bottom of the stacking order in my layers, okay? So I'm going to start a little bit on the inside here. I'm going to click once. I'm going to come over to the edge, click and drag, release my mouse, click back to delete that anchor point, or sorry, that control handle. And then I'll come in a little bit here, click and drag, delete that control handle. And it doesn't really matter how this line segment looks here because the body will cover it. I'll just make sure that I'm closing my path. Again, so I'm looking for that circular icon and then I'm clicking and releasing. Okay, so again, now we'll create the tail or sorry, let's go back and actually label this. 
So I'll name this right wing. And now I'll go in and draw the right side of the tail with my pen tool. So again, I'm just gonna click, go down to the bottom, click and drag, delete this anchor point, go up, make sure it's closed, and then rename that right tail. And that should be it for the shapes that I need to create for this side of the rocket. And then I can copy it and flip it over. So what I could do now is just simply just hide my raster layer by clicking on the eye ball, just deselecting. So this is what I have so far here. So what I'm gonna do is take my selection tool, which is the letter V, so the black arrow and I'm gonna select these shapes. And now I'm gonna transform this, so I'm gonna make a mirror copy of this and flip it on the other side. And so what I'm gonna do now is use my reflect tool to reflect this shape over to the left-hand side. So in my toolbox, inside of your rotate tool, if you hold that down, you'll see the reflect tool. So I could just tear that off because I might need to use this again. So I'll select the reflect tool. And then here you'll see your origin point. So it looks like this little blue target. This determines from which point your shape will be rotated, reflected, or scaled. So what we wanna do is actually move this to about the center bottom of the body of the rocket, okay? So what I'm gonna do to move it and actually bring up my reflection options is to put my cursor right in the center there at the bottom of the body of the rocket. I'm gonna hold the option or alt key until you see like an underscore. And then I'm gonna click once. Once I click, you'll get your reflect options up. So what I wanna do is reflect this vertically. But if I click okay, it's just gonna take my original um, graphic or paths and reflect it but I want to create a copy of it so that it keeps the original and then reflects it over to the other side so I'm going to click copy and now I have a duplicate of these sides here okay so what I'm going to do in my layer panel is actually rename these paths which are selected so you can see in my selection column these paths are selected. So remember, you can select objects from your layer panel, right? Not only on the artboard with your selection tool, but if you need to select a shape, you can select it from your layer panel. So I'm just gonna name all of these that are selected here. So from the body, this now is gonna be left body. This will be left wing. And this will be the left tail. Okay. So now the other shapes that I'm going to need is the exhaust. So I'm just going to grab my rectangle tool for that. I'm just going to go down here and just draw a rectangle. Okay. And I'll label that. I'll label that as exhaust. And then what I'll do is create the windows. So I'll grab my ellipse tool. And remember to create a circle. You wanna start from the center point. So you're gonna hold down the option key and the shift key. And then I'll just click and drag and create that. So I'll name that window. And a quick way to draw a copy of a circle with just like an equal distance either outside of the original or inside is to create something called an offset path. So with my original selected here, I'm going to go up to my object menu. 
I'm going to go down to path and I'm going to select offset path. Okay. And you'll see already there is a copy of this 10 pixels larger than the original. So I can maybe choose 12, hit the tab key to see how it looks and preview it. All right, it's close. Maybe I'll just choose 15 just to make it a bit larger. So 15 is good. And again, your numbers might be different based on how large you've actually placed your original sketch inside of here. So I'll click OK. And then in my layer panel, I'm just going to rename this. So you can tell which path that you have selected with this red square here. I'm just going to name that window frame. Okay, so now we can draw maybe the stars. So remember to draw stars and this one has four sides. So I can hit the down arrow key before I release my mouse. I can also hold shift to make sure that they're straight, right? I can also just hold down the command key a little bit just to make the um, insides of the star a bit sharper. So as I hold command and drag outwards or inwards, It'll make the points a bit sharper. All right, so I'll just release that. So now my star is all set up, so I can just delete it. And now I can just click and drag, hold shift, hold the space bar to move it down or reposition it, and then release my mouse. And I can do the same thing. So remember, you can draw it from the center point as well. So I can draw this one from the center point by holding option, and shift, Click and drag outwards and do the same thing for these ones. So option, shift, drag, option, shift, drag, option, shift, drag. Okay, so last part we need to draw are the flames here. So to draw the flame, I'll actually use my rounded rectangle tool. And so I'll just draw one. So I'm just going to zoom in here. I'll draw the first one again remember you can adjust the radius of your rounded rectangle tool by holding the up or down arrow keys so i'm just going to draw this one out and now what i'm going to do is edit this shape with my pen tool so if i just grab my direct selection tool which is my white arrow we could see here that i have six anchor points that make up this shape so i got one two three four, five, six. So if I delete these two anchor points on the left and the right hand side, what that'll do is make this anchor point connect directly to the one in the center and this one do the same, which will give me this sort of teardrop shape. So what I'll do is grab my delete anchor point tool, which is inside of my pen tool here. And I'm going to delete this anchor point and that anchor point and then it gives me my shape so now i can hit the letter v to get my selection tool just deselect and select it again just so i make sure all my anchor points are selected and then what i could do is copy this shape so now i can just hover over the path hold down the option or alt key click and drag and move this over and then I can scale this down by holding shift, scale it down. And if I just want to warp it, I'll just scale it a bit outwards. And I could do the same thing, option or alt key, drag over, scale it in, and then scale it down. And okay, so you could just adjust that. All right, so we got all of our shapes done. So again, you can see here, we'll just go into our layers, right? I'll just rename some of these. So I'll go flame. I could just copy that, paste that in because I have three flames here. This one is star, so I could just copy this as well and paste in those. Okay, so I got all my paths labeled my layer labeled, 
And now I'm just going to quickly just save this. So I'm going to go Command S or Control S. And just on my desktop for the sake of this tutorial, I will just create a new folder and call it Vector Rocket. I'll save that as an Illustrator file. Okay, so we can save that Illustrator 2020. Click OK. All right, so now we can start to color this in. So quick tip here, I'm going to show you something called your eyedropper tool, right, which will allow you to sample color from any document that's inside of your Illustrator file or even outside of it. Okay, so for the sake of this tutorial, I'm actually going to place in the completed um, illustration here. So I'm going to go file, place, and this time I'm going to go back out. I'll go to the file that I downloaded earlier where that example is of oh, my vector rocket and I'm going to place it in and I'm just going to place it just off to the side here. Okay. So now what I can do is select the body or the right hand side body of my rocket. I'm going to grab the eyedropper tool and now the last selection tool that I had was the um, selection arrow, so the black arrow. So now if I hold down the command key, you can see that it brings up the last selection tool I had active, which is my black arrow. Okay, so what I'm going to do is hold down the command key, select an object. When I release it, it's going to have my eyedropper tool selected. And I'm just going to come over and click and sample a color from this illustration. Okay, so I'm just going to actually make this a bit bigger so that you can see it. Right, so I'm going to select the right hand side of the body. I'm going to click anywhere and sample that color right there. I'm going to hold down command, select the left hand side, sample that color. Okay, I'm going to hold down for the circle, sample that color, hold down command, sample the blue. Hold down command again, sample for the wing. And you'll see we can reorganize these shapes afterwards. Okay, but for now I'm just gonna sample all the colors here. Okay, to select multiple shapes, you wanna select your selection tool and then hold shift and select all of these shapes. You could also select them with a marquee selection, meaning you could just click in a blank area, select and just touch any part of those objects and it will select them. And I can grab my eyedropper tool and sample that color. And then I'll do the same thing for these stars. And I'll sample those. Okay. So I'm just going to make my layer panel a bit wider so we can see everything. Okay. So now we can start to organize our layers. So I'm just going to hit Command S just to save that again. Okay. So our exhaust is going to go at the bottom of the stacking order. So here at the top, we have our flames. At the bottom of our stacking order, we have our right body. Okay. So we're going to put the exhaust at the very bottom. So we're just going to click and drag until we see that blue line goes underneath that path. Our left body and right body should be next to each other here. The wing should actually be under our right body. So I'll move the left wing and right wing under the body. Okay, our left tail is above the body. So is our right tail. The window and window frame are in its correct position. And maybe I'll just put the flames down below, right? They're not really above or below these images here or these um, shapes, but I'll just, for the sake of organizing this, I will keep it below, right? So again, I'll hold down Command and S or Control S on a Windows machine and save my file. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to 
collapse this layer and I'm going to make a new layer again and I'm going to name it background and I'm just going to move it right underneath my rocket layer. Okay, so on this layer, I'm going to have it selected and I'm just going to make the background shape. So I'm just going to take my rectangle tool, make a shape, which is going to be my background and take my eyedropper tool and I could just sample the background here. Okay, so I could lock that layer as well. Okay, and you want to lock your layers so that you don't move them. Okay, so you'll already see like I'm organizing my file based on layers, labeling the paths, locking them so I don't move things around. All right, so now I can even just start to group these shapes together. So remember, grouping is to group shapes that are similar to each other or are uh, relative to each other. So all my stars, I could select them by holding shift. Okay, and then I can go up to my object menu and select group or command G is the shortcut key. Okay, and that will group all of these together. Okay, so if I look at my layer panel, it collapses all of these stars together in a group. So I could just name that group stars. Okay, I could do the same thing for the flames. Remember, you could also select objects from your um, layer panel. So I can, I can select the flame from my layer panel here. Hold shift, just keep clicking on the selection um, column. And now I can hit Command or Control G, and that groups all my flames together. So I can rename that as flames. And then for the rest of this, right, also to deselect, right? So right now I selected all of this stuff. I could just hold Shift, click once on the star group. You'll see it releases all of the stars. Same thing as the flames. And now I only have all the components for my rocket here. So I can do command or control G again. And it groups all of those. And I can name that rocket, right? So now I can select all of the stars at once, all of the flames at once, all of the pieces of the rocket as once. And I can scale it, rotate it, move it around just because they are grouped now. Okay? So that's exactly what I want to do. I want to just scale down the rocket just a little bit. So again, remember when you're scaling objects, right? I'm selecting all of these. So I hold shift, select the flames. And when you're scaling, you want to scale from any corner point of the bounding box. And you want to hold shift while you scale it, right? So I'm just going to scale it down. Move it. And just so I have the correct sort of like spacing for it. I could scale those up if I want to. All right. So now we have to create actually the tip of the rocket. Okay. So I'm going to zoom in here. And what I'll do is because I want to just use like the shape that already exists for the rocket, I'm just going to quickly ungroup it. So I'm going to go shift command G to ungroup. So now I could select these shapes independently again. And what I'm going to do is use something called the shape builder tool, right? So if I look over here, I have the shape builder tool. The shape builder tool allows me to either merge or delete shapes from one another. So, for example, if I want to create the tip of that rocket here, right, instead of me drawing a new shape over top of it, what I could do is I could take this rectangle tool. So first what I'll do is select the body. I'm going to copy it, so Command-C. And then what I'm going to do is paste it in place or paste it in front. So to paste in front is Command or Control-F. 
right? So now I basically have two copies of this shape. And now what I'll do is take my rectangle tool and place my rectangle right at the tip or the top of the rocket body. I'm just going to click and drag downwards right to about there. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is select both the copy of the right hand side of the rocket and hold shift and select that square that I just made. Okay, so if you look closely there, you'll see the outline of the body is there. Now if I grab my shape builder tool that's in the toolbox, I'm just gonna zoom in. The shape builder tool recognizes wherever two shapes are selected, it creates a third shape. So I have the body here, the tip here, and the excess shape here. So the plus sign means I'm gonna add to the shape. If I hold down option or alt, it means I'm gonna delete from that shape. So what I wanna do is delete the excess and delete this portion of it and only keep this part of the rocket. So now if I grab my selection tool, I'm just gonna zoom out a little bit. Now I can grab my eyedropper tool with that shape selected, sample that, and then you can see I have the tip of the rocket there, okay? So I could either try that again, or I could just reflect that shape over and sample the color. But I'll show you just how the um, Shape Builder tool works again. So I'll zoom in, grab my selection tool, select this time the left-hand side body. I'm going to copy it, Command or Control C, paste in front, Command or Control F. Right. So now I have the left body copy selected. Take your rectangle tool, start at the top, draw a square just coming right off the edge there. Okay. Grab your selection tool, hold shift, select the copy of the left body and this square. Then grab your shape builder tool, hold down the option or alt key, click once on the outside and once below. Then it leaves you with this shape. So I'm going to tap the letter V to grab my selection tool. And I'm just going to zoom out. And then grab my eyedropper tool and sample that color there. And then I'll hit Command S just to save again. And deselect. Okay, so this is what we have so far. And then the last step. And then next we will add some text. So in your files to add the text, if you're using a Mac, you have FontBook installed. You can actually just search for FontBook in your spotlight, type in FontBook. If you're on a Windows machine, you could just drag the fonts that I provided in the folder here into your C drive, go inside of Windows, and then you'll see a font folder. You could take these fonts here, drag them into there, or if you're in FontBook, just take this folder and drag it over into all fonts, and then you can just install it. Okay, so it'll validate it. You just click on it, select all fonts, install check. Okay, so I already have mine set up here. So what I'm going to do is grab my type tool. In my toolbox, I will select the type tool and I'm just going to use point text for this. So I'm going to click once and I'm going to type vector rocket. I'll just hit the escape key. And now in my control panel or in my properties panel, I can go over to my character panel and I'm just going to type in league gothic. All right, which is right here. I'll select that. And then I can increase the font size right, to 72. If I want to increase this further, I could hold down the shortcut key, which is shift command or shift control greater than or less than sign to make my text larger or smaller. So I'll position it over here. 
I'm just going to change the color to white. Okay, or in my swatch panel, I could just select white from there. And if I want to change this to all caps or uppercase, I can now go to my type menu up at the top. I can select change case and choose uppercase. Okay. And then the next text I will write out is created with Adobe Illustrator. Okay, so if we look over to the example here, okay, Adobe Illustrator CC. Okay, so again, I'm going to use point text. I'm going to type in Adobe Illustrator CC. And that type is the Gothic as well, but just a bit smaller. So we'll probably make that around 48 points. Okay. That is also in uppercase. So I'll select it, go to my type menu, go change case, uppercase. I'll just make it a bit smaller. So command shift less than change my color to white. So again, you could choose it in your swatch panel from here as well. And then the last type just right in between. I'll type in made with and this time the typeface that I'll choose is called Pacifico. And we can reduce that down maybe about 32 points I have it at. And again, I'll make that white as well. So I'll just move this type just a little bit closer to each other. All right, so just so we can see it here. So I can make this and this black and maybe just leave that white. Okay, you could choose color it in whatever you want. And then lastly, you could just create some of these circles here on your own. So we could take our ellipse tool. We could just draw a circle. Just start off in the edge, which is going to be sort of like the smoke, right? And we could fill that in white. And then we could just hold option and just make some copies. All right? You could change the sizes of them as well if you want to. Okay. This is sort of tedious, but a way that we can do this, which is quicker is to make something called a symbol. Okay, so I can take one of these and I could turn it into a symbol. And a symbol in Illustrator is used to create repetitive artwork. Okay, you could use your symbol sprayer as well for this, which is here. So if you're creating something with like patterns where you want to distribute multiple graphics or multiple objects that are the same, you can use your symbol sprayer tool for that. So to create a symbol, what I'm going to do is go to my window menu. I'm going to select symbols. All right, so right here. And all I have to do is just drag this circle into my symbol panel. All right, it's going to give you my symbol options. I'm going to type in cloud or smoke whatever you want to call it and hit enter and now that it lives in here it's a parent symbol so i could delete it off my artboard and now if i take my symbol sprayer tool i'm just going to tear this off here All right so we have the symbol sprayer tool 
We have a shifter tool, which allows you to move the symbols within its symbol set. The scruncher tool allows you to move them or overlap them together. The sizer tool allows you to resize the symbols, so make them either smaller or larger by holding down your alt key or your option key. You also have the spinner tool and the stainer tool in case you want to change its color. The screener tool is used to reduce or increase the opacity. And the styler tool is used if you have like graphic styles that you want to place on top of it. So first thing I'll do is use my sprayer tool. Okay, so I can either increase or decrease my brush by holding down the left or right square bracket keys, which are basically your curly braces on your keyboard. And now I could just click and drag as many of these circles that I would like, like that. Right? I could just keep adding some in here if I want to. Okay. Now... I'm just going to tear this off so we can see it. So now I can use the screener tool. And if I click just really quickly, you'll see it reduces the opacity of some of the circles that I'm clicking on. Right, so a really quick way to create multiple objects on the artboard. And then you can just Reduce their opacity. If you want to bring the opacity back up, you just hold down the Option or Alt key, and it brings that opacity back up. If you want to reduce it more, just click a bit longer. All right, so anything that's off of my trim won't really show on my finished artwork here. All right, but if I have something like that, then I could also maybe like change the size of them. So I could click on the sizer tool. And again, if I click, I can click and hold and it makes some of these bigger. All right, if I hold down option and click, it makes some of them smaller. zoom out a little bit and then now I could just move that symbol set right down to the bottom of my stacking order so that it doesn't go over top of the um, text and now I could just delete that image that I placed in there I can hold down command s again to save my file just going to zoom in a little bit. Okay, and there you have it. So I'm done. So now I have most of my vector graphic here all grouped together. I can collapse that. So I got my vector rocket. I have some of my text in here. Right? Again, I can maybe just group the rocket one more time now that it's complete. So I'll select that. I'll hit Command-G. Name that rocket. Maybe grab my text. You could also group that and name it text. And then the symbol set, I can rename that as if you want it to be clouds or smoke, right? We could just rename that. And so last thing we'll do here is actually maybe save this out. So we can go up to our file menu, go file, save as. Right, we already have it saved as an Illustrator file, but we could also save this as a PDF. Right, so if we choose PDF from the format options here, we can click Save. We could save this as a high quality PDF. Save it, and remember, it only saves what's inside of the trim area. So if I go to my desktop, go to Vector Rocket. This is the PDF right here. This is what our illustration looks like. And if we want to save this as a JPEG, we can go to File, Export, Export, Save for Web Legacy. 
and we can save this as a JPEG. So you can choose from the right hand side here. You can go JPEG, GIF or PNG. I'll choose JPEG for now. Quality can be all the way up. The size, 1000 pixels by 1000 pixels. And then we can just hit save, choose where we want to save it. All right. And now, again, if I look to my folder, now I have my Illustrator file, which is editable. I have a JPEG, which I can put on my blog post or share on Padlet. And I have a PDF, which I could send to print. All right. So we'll Command S. So now that's how you use some of your layers, um, your colors as well. And this is basically how you use your basic shapes, your pen tool to either create shapes, edit them to create a custom illustration and put together a graphic using all the tools that we've learned so far. So you can always review the color tools, the basic shapes, the pen tool. Also take a look at the exercise files that contain um, exercises on layers and colors. And then you can actually practice your own. So maybe grab a sheet of paper, graph paper, your sketchbook, draw anything you like, scan it, take a picture, place it into Illustrator, lock your layer, start to draw over top of it and see if you can create an illustration of your own. Feel free to share it on Padlet or share it in your Blackboard um, discussion um, chat and we can see what you created. So again, let me know how you found this um, video tutorial. If you like it, give it a like and leave comments for me below.